Okay, so in the last uh, lecture, uh, what we discussed was uh, about describing functions and we uh, saw the calculation of uh, describing functions for two types of uh, nonlinearity. And uh, what we will now do is um, we will look at how one can utilize this describing function to actually uh, try and find out whether a given uh, um, nonlinearity, uh, non I mean a linear plant with a nonlinearity, if in that given uh, system there is a limit cycle and uh, how one can utilize this describing function to find out if there is a limit cycle and uh, to find out what the frequency of this, uh, this limit cycle is and what the magnitude of this limit cycle is and so on. Okay. So, um, all right. So, let me, uh, let me just uh, uh, recall uh, recall what uh, what we um, did in the last lecture so uh, uh, so suppose you had a nonlinearity which was a sine function so um, so it gave a gain of minus uh, plus m and minus m depending on whether the input was positive or negative and uh, we found out that the describing function for this was 4m by pi a. We also considered another kind of a nonlinearity which was a relay. So, this, this one could think of as an ideal relay. Yeah. And uh, we could think of another nonlinearity which is a relay with uh, dead time. and its characteristics was given by there was a gain of plus m and there was a gain of minus m uh, provided of course, the input was larger than small d here. Okay. So, this gain is m and minus m and uh, we calculated that uh, in this case also of course, it is independent of the uh, frequency of the input signal, the output. Uh, so, uh, the way we are calculating the describing function is that we are uh, computing what is the um, what is the primary harmonic and then uh, the gain that we calculate by uh, you know the output gain by input gain and the angle also in the same way. So, in this case of course, the angle was 0 and in this case this turns out to be 4 m by pi a times cos alpha with angle 0 degrees, where this alpha is given to be sin inverse of d by a and uh, this, this thing is only valid for, uh, this is only valid for a greater than equal to d okay. and phi of a is equal to 0 if a less than d. So, this was a describing function for the relay with dead time. So, describing function for the ideal relay is a very simple expression whereas, the for, uh, uh, for uh, the relay with dead time there are two different cases. So, now what we are going to do is uh, look at uh, look at the original system that we wanted to analyze and the original system that we wanted to analyze had a linear plant and a nonlinearity in a feedback connection. Okay. So, uh, and uh, this nonlinearity let us assume has uh, a omega this uh, is the describing function for this particular nonlinearity. Okay. So, uh, now if you go around the loop, if you go around the loop that means, you start with any signal here, then, uh, then out here you can think of it as being g s times e. Okay. If e is the signal here, then out here it goes through the linear plant, you get g s times e. Then you go through n, 
and when you go through n you end up with phi a okay so i'll i'll just suppress the omega because uh, right now whatever we have looked at the describing function is independent of omega so phi a g s times e that's a signal here okay and so once you go through this the negative part so what you have is this plus e should be equal to 0 i hope uh, i hope what i'm saying is clear this signal here is phi a g s e and so now if you think of this input here as being the zero input then what we are saying is zero minus phi a g s e is equal to this error signal um, this signal e and so uh, i can rewrite that as this times e equal to zero so if i pull the e out i get one plus phi a g s E equal to zero. Okay, uh, if this was not a nonlinearity, but for example, if it was a gain, just a gain k, then this equation essentially would have been one plus k g s. And uh, of course, we know that this is the characteristic equation for this closed loop system. Yeah. So uh, what we have written down here is very similar to the uh, to the closed loop system equation. Mm -hmm the characteristic equation of the closed loop system would have been this. This we can think of as a characteristic equation of the closed loop system when you are thinking of a linear system with a non-linearity. Okay. Now, uh, what we are going to do is we are going to use ideas similar to the ideas used for linear systems. And uh, so, uh, in case of a linear system, we can make use of this characteristic equation of the uh, of the closed loop system, and we can say something about whether the resulting system, the closed loop system, is stable or not by looking at the Nyquist plot of uh, of the linear part. Yeah. So how do we do that? Well, we look at so this is the characteristic equation. So you look at the point minus one by k. Uh, what what I'm really doing is I pull out the k, and so I have one by k plus g s. Okay. So you look at the Nyquist plot. Let's say this is the Nyquist plot of g s, and then uh, we can say that the resulting closed loop system is stable or unstable, depending upon whether the Nyquist plot n circles minus 1 by k or not. Okay. So, for example, and this is precisely the, uh, the Nyquist plot criterion that uh, we discussed uh, several times before. So, for example, suppose you had started out with uh, a g of s which was uh, stable, that means the open loop, uh, the open loop transfer function was stable. Then in that case, for the closed loop transfer function, to continue to be stable, that means for the, uh, the closed loop thing to be stable, what we should have is this being the characteristic equations the, and you are looking at the closed loop with the gain k, then uh, the g of j omega should not en encircle minus 1 by k, in which case it is stable. On the other hand, if it encircles minus 1 by k, it is unstable. Okay? So, now what we will do with with the uh, with the nonlinear system is something very similar to this. Okay, but before I go into that, uh, let me just look at the uh, the closed loop system for the stable. Uh, the, uh, I mean, uh, for the linear case, and uh, make some observations. So suppose you have a plan G S. Yeah, and uh, let's make the standing assumption that G S is stable. 
Yeah. Uh, if it is not stable, if GS has some um, right half poles and so on, then uh, whatever interpretation we are doing using the Nyquist plot, uh, you should change it accordingly depending upon um, you know how much, uh, what is the um, instability of GS. Okay. But suppose we make the assumption GS is stable and we look at is this uh, feedback system with uh, uh, with a gain k then the characteristic equation is 1 plus kgs so now suppose uh, we look at the nyquist plot and uh, let's say the nyquist plot looks like that okay because gs is stable then this uh, nyquist plot criterion will tell you that this nyquist the nyquist plot Okay, so let me also draw the reflection. Okay, so this is the Nyquist plot. So we see that uh, the the thing that we are interested in is this quantity minus one by k. So if this minus one by k is here. That means k is such that you get minus 1 by k here, then the resulting closed loop system is stable. Okay. What does it mean to say that this closed loop system is stable? What it means is suppose your gain is such that uh, minus 1 by k is like this uh, at this point, then you have this closed loop system, and suppose by some means, let us say, we manage to introduce some noise here okay, at this point. Then uh, this noise, I mean the, the, the linear plant acts on this noise and you get some output here. So, let me just write it as g times e and this g times e then gets multiplied by this k. So, you get k g e and it comes here and there is this feedback by which it gets in here. So, uh, it goes round this cycle and what is really happening is when it goes round this cycle, its magnitude, I mean uh, its magnitude gets attenuated and so what one can expect is that uh, going around this loop, going around the loop the magnitude of this error gets attenuated until it becomes 0. And so, when we say that in this linear system, this uh, if the k gain is such that minus 1 by k is not enclosed by this uh, Nyquist plot, what we are really saying is that uh, small error signals or error signals cannot exist here, because when it goes round the loop, it sort of gets attenuated. On the other hand, if this k was a gain such that minus 1 by k was here. Now, if it is here, then you can see that uh, it gets encircled twice. Because g s is stable, therefore, the closed loop transfer function is not stable. If the closed loop transfer function is not stable, what it means is some signal, if, if the state is non-zero, then it might trigger the unstable parts of the transfer function, in which case the signal can blow up. And the signal blowing up is equivalent to saying that when you go around this loop, there is a signal which is not getting attenuated, but in fact it is getting magnified. So, if you assume G s is stable, then uh, outside no encirclements would mean that inside this loop signals get attenuated. On the other hand, if there is encirclements, then the closed loop system is unstable, because what it translates to is that there are right half poles uh, for the closed loop transfer function, because we have assumed that the open loop transfer function is stable. But what that means is, if you have some signal in this closed loop situation, those signals can blow up. So, if, if minus 1 by k is in here, it can blow up. If it is out there, 
it just gets attenuated, it dies out. Now, let us take uh, let us take G s and let us take this nonlinearity n and uh, look at this feedback situation. So, we just saw what happens if you take a linear gain, but instead if you take a nonlinearity, so for the nonlinearity, we can represent the nonlinearity and especially if if we are analyzing sinusoidal signals, we can assign the, the describing function of the nonlinearity rather than the nonlinearity for any specific uh, sinusoidal signal uh, if you want to study what happens to a sinusoidal signal in there. Okay? And so, just like the characteristic equation that we wrote down for the linear plant, uh, earlier we had written down that the characteristic equation for this nonlinear system would be this this uh, this equal to 0 so in the linear case it is 1 plus kg fs equal to 0 in the nonlinear system is that gain k that constant gain k is uh, substituted by this um, by this uh, describing function. And therefore, now given the linear plant of course, one can draw the Nyquist plot of that plant eh? g j omega and maybe this is how the reflection looks. Okay? And uh, we make the earlier assumption that g s is stable. So, look at the look at the characteristic equation of this nonlinear system. So, what we are saying is G s. So, so just like here we were looking at minus 1 by k, here we could look at minus 1 by phi of a. So, now if you are going to analyze for some signal let us say a sin omega t, Okay, so, we are interested in analyzing what happens if you use this signal a sin omega t. Then uh, we can look at corresponding to that a what this value here of the describing function is and we can look at g s and see if this point which represents minus 1 by phi, if this point is encircled by the Nyquist plot of g j omega or not. Now, if this point, okay, so now let us assume uh, for this given a, we calculate this phi of a and so you will get some value here and so minus 1 by k is some point, let us say here. Then, if you think of this phi of a just purely like a gain here, then from the earlier discussion what we had, we can conclude that uh, with such a signal a sin omega t here, what is going to happen is in this closed loop, this is going to get attenuated and therefore, the system is finally going to settle down with all the signals becoming 0. On the other hand, if this minus 1 upon phi by a is some point in here or some point in here, then of course, there are encirclements of g j omega. If it is a point here, there is one encirclement of g j omega. If it is a point here, there are two circles encirclements of g j omega, but in both those cases the resulting system is going to be unstable. So, if you take a signal a sin omega t where a is such that this thing that you calculate turns out to be inside this portion of the Nyquist plot, then the resulting signal is not going to dry out, but it is going to grow exponentially. So, what we could do is give this linear plant, one can draw its Nyquist plot and uh, given the describing function of the nonlinearity, one could plot minus 1 upon phi by a as you vary a. So, plot as you 
as A is varied. Okay. Now, once you have got this plot, then all those points where minus 1 by phi A is outside the Nyquist, uh, the Nyquist plot of the linear part will lead to the closed loop system being stable and if it is inside, then it will lead to the closed loop system being unstable. But if minus 1 by phi a this plot intersects this at some point, so in the boundary, then it is neither stable nor I mean it is neither stable that means it does not die out, neither is it unstable in the sense that it does not blow up. So, what one can expect when it is there is that it, it sort of sustains the sinusoidal motion and therefore, what you can expect to get is a limit cycle in this closed loop nonlinear system. Okay. The best way to of course, see this is uh, by using some, some example. So, let us take an example, let us uh, assume that uh, the linear plant G of S is given by um, let us say 1 upon One, okay, and let's say the nonlinearity n is the nonlinearity whose characteristics are like that. Yeah, this this nonlinearity we already found the describing function for this. We see that phi of a is given by four m by pi a, and we are now interested in this particular arrangement where you have the linear system and you have the nonlinearity n and this thing is fed back in this following way and we want to find out whether this given system has a has a limit cycle and if it has a limit cycle at what frequency what amplitude the limit cycle exists okay so uh, for this um, let us uh, first uh, plot so, so, this is a complex plane and uh, we are having G s 1 upon s into s plus 1. So, if you plot this, you are going to end up with uh, we are only going to approach from here. So, um, let me not take 1 upon s plus 1, but uh, 1 upon s into s plus 1 squared. Okay, so, if you look at the Nyquist plot of this, one would expect this to be something like that. Huh? Okay. So, we have drawn the Nyquist plot of g j omega, I mean uh, at uh, s equal to 0, it is infinity with uh, an angle of minus 90. So, it is somewhere here, somewhere down here and then it comes and uh, as s tends to infinity, this thing goes to 0, but with an angle minus 270 degrees. So, this is this is the kind of plot that you would get. Now, uh, now let us look at the nonlinear part. The nonlinear, the describing function is given by 4 m by pi a and therefore, what we are going to plot is minus 1 by phi a which is uh, minus pi a upon 4 m. So, what does this plot look like? Well, I let me use a blue pen for this. Uh, so, when a is 0, it is here and as a increases, you have it going that way. Okay. So, this portion of the of the plot for minus 1 by phi a corresponds to a equal to 0 and uh, somewhere up there a very large yeah uh, because of minus sign that is why this side 
otherwise it would have been this side because of the minus sign we are plotting it it is this way. So, now what one can see is that for small values of a. Uh, so, if you draw out the full thing for the uh, Nyquist plot, if you draw the full thing for the Nyquist plot you are going to end up uh, getting something like that and right round. Okay. So, now you can straight away notice that small values of a it is as if this point is enclosed by okay, first of all the plant G s the open loop plant G s is stable. So, now for small values of a you are inside therefore, it is unstable. Uh, what does it mean to say this is unstable? What it means is in that uh, in that closed loop the signals are going to blow up. On the other hand if you have a large a then uh, the amplitude gets attenuated which means in the closed loop. So, when I say closed loop I mean this particular situation. Okay. So, if you had if you had a a here and you had a small amplitude thing here then uh, it it gets blown up. On the other hand if you had a large amplitude thing here corresponding to some point here. Then from the earlier discussions about gain what would happen is it gets attenuated that means, it gets brought down. But if you have a a which corresponds to this point here then it is precisely on the Nyquist plot. And if it is on the Nyquist plot what you are going to get is sustained oscillations. Okay. How do you get the sustained oscillations? Well, first of all we can let us let us use this transfer function to find out what is this point that you cross here. You see that for the Nyquist plot you should have an angle equal to. So, the angle must be equal to minus uh, pi, but you can get this angle of minus pi for this transfer function at um, when you evaluate at j omega equal to 1, because at j omega equal to 1 s plus 1 both these s plus 1 will contribute minus 45 each and this s will contribute minus 90 degrees this minus 45 each and so the total is going to be minus 180 degrees. So, at omega equal to 1 that is when that is why when this transfer function I mean the Nyquist plot will uh, hit the m negative real axis. And of course, uh, g of j 1 modulus I mean the magnitude at that point is going to be 1 upon okay, 1 plus 1 the square root of that, but then squared half. So, this point here is minus half. And so, minus half is equal to minus pi a by 4 m and therefore, uh, equating this we can say a is equal to 2 m by pi. So, now what we are saying is the following. In this closed loop system suppose you had a signal here whose uh, okay. Suppose you had a signal here whose amplitude was 2 m by pi sin omega uh, sin t, because we are say taking j omega for the uh, for the for the linear part, it was at omega equal to 1 that it crossed the imaginary axis. Yeah. So, the value of a is 2 m by pi. So, so we are now looking at an input to the nonlinearity which has uh, this particular magnitude 2 m by pi sin t. Now, if you have this input to the nonlinearity, the output to the nonlinearity of course, is a uh, is a periodic signal need not be a sinusoid, but uh, 
its primary component has the value 4 m by pi sin t. So, the primary component of the signal here has the value 4 m by pi sin t. This, this we can see straight away from, from, the, uh, from the describing function that we have written down here. Now, uh, if you assume therefore, that the signal here is minus 4 m by pi sin t, when it passes through this transfer function, there is a gain of half, which is the gain that you will have for, uh, for this transfer function at the frequency 1. And therefore, with this gain, what you will end up with is this 4 m by pi sin t will now get to be 2 m by pi sin t. And so, there would be a sustained oscillation of a signal here. And this sustained oscillation of a signal is the sign that we have discovered a limit cycle in the nonlinear system. Okay. Now, for the limit cycle, the time period of the limit cycle can be said time period of the limit cycle is going to be pi, because this sinusoid has a period pi. And uh, since you can talk about the time period, therefore, you can also talk about the frequency and the frequency is the frequency that we have read off from the Nyquist plot of the linear plant. That means, the frequency is omega equal to 1. So, the frequency omega equal to 1 and the amplitude is the amplitude that you can read off by from this equation. And so, the amplitude is 2 m by pi. So, with this amplitude and this frequency, you can expect a limit cycle to go around in this closed loop system. Further, you can claim that this limit cycle is a stable limit cycle. Now, how can you make this claim that it is a stable limit cycle? Okay. So, the way the limit cycle is operating is that there the, the, the frequency is fixed and the amplitude is fixed by uh, looking at the intersection of the Nyquist plot of the linear part and the describing function of the nonlinear part and it is out here. Let us make some small changes. So, let us assume that this amplitude of the signal here by some disturbance increases. Now, if the amplitude increases, what that means is on this amplitude thing as far as the describing function is concerned, it has moved away from the existing point. Now, if it moves away from the existing point this side, then from the earlier discussion we know that the system is such that uh, this system is stable in the sense that the signals will die out, it will attenuate. So, what does it mean to say that the system is attenuating? That means, the amplitude which had increased is going to come down, but the amplitude coming down means that along the, along the, the plot of the describing function, had you gone up there, you will come back. Yeah? So, if the amplitude had increased, it will start decreasing. On the other hand, if the amplitude had decreased, gone down below 2 m by pi, you would have been inside. And if you are inside, you know that the resulting system is supposedly unstable, which means you will, you will be pushed back. And so, along the, if you look along the, along the line of the describing function, if you go that side, you get pushed back in here. If you go this side, you get pushed back in there, which essentially means that in the phase plane, if you are looking at the phase plane, you have this limit cycle. If you get to an amplitude larger, that means you get pushed out, then you are somewhere here and you get pushed back. So, you get back to the limit cycle. If on the other hand, from the limit cycle you get pushed inwards, that means you get into a point here, then you, again you get, you know, because it is the resulting system is unstable, the signal grows and the signal grows and you get right back to where you had started from. And therefore, in this particular case, the limit cycle that you have got here is a stable limit cycle. Okay. We can uh, now analyze uh, the 
nonlinear system that you get by taking the same linear plant as before. So, so let us take the same linear plant which is 1 upon s into s plus 1 squared. But this time the nonlinearity that we consider is the other the other nonlinearity which is the relay with dead time. So, it has characteristics like this. So, this is d, this is minus d. So, when it is larger than d then you get uh, plus m minus m. So, this is relay with dead time. So, this is relay with dead time. So, um, so, now again the Nyquist plot of this is exactly the same as before. So, the reflection is going to go like that. Okay. So, uh, so it is exactly the same as before. The only uh, difference that you are going to get is from the from the characteristic from, from the uh, describing function. Now, the describing function we saw was uh, 4 m by pi a cos alpha for a greater than or equal to d and it was equal to 0 for a less than d. Okay. So, for a less than d and uh, of course, we have to plot minus 1 by phi a. So, what does the plot of minus 1 by phi a look like? So, minus 1 by phi a is minus pi a by 4 m cos alpha and uh, let me write down cos alpha in terms of d and m. So, that uh, this is some unknown quantity. So, let me get rid of that. So, it will be pi a by 4 m square root of a squared minus d squared and this is a squared. Now, when a is 0 or when a is less than d, of course, this formula is not applicable, but it is this formula which is applicable. So, minus 1 by phi a is going to be at minus infinity. Okay. Then, once a becomes larger than d, so, so when a has just become larger than d, then if you look the denominator is going to be a very small number. As a result, this whole thing, this whole thing is going to be a very large number. So, minus, so it is somewhere near this thing. And then as a increases, this minus 1 by phi a decreases. Yeah. Of course, they are all real values. So, I am not drawing along the axis because I want it to be clear what this is. And this will keep decreasing until a certain point. And then when a becomes even larger than that certain point, then what you are going to get is it keeps increasing. Because if you think of a close to infinity, I mean a being very large number, then this thing is square root of a squared minus d squared, this can be approximated as being a. And so, you have pi a squared upon 4 m a. So, 1 a goes. So, you have the other a. So, you again go back to minus infinity. So, this is the case where a is equal to d and it is increasing. It comes up to some maximum value and then it starts decreasing until this is a equal to infinity. So, so a as a is increasing first it comes down this way and then it goes back this way. Of course, all these numbers are just real numbers along this uh, negative real axis, but I have drawn it this way just for the sake of clarity. Okay. Uh, what is this value where uh, this is going to be a minima where I mean the magnitude is going to be a minima? Well, that you can uh, calculate uh, by uh, just doing a bit of I mean because you are varying a, all you have to do is uh, you take the derivative of this function and find out when this function uh, either phi a attains a maxima or 1 upon phi a attains a minima. 
Okay, so, we could just look here and try to find out what is the value of a where this phi a attains a maxima. And it turns out that that would be the case when uh, this alpha is uh, 45 degrees and you get alpha to be 45 degrees if uh, a is equal to root 2 times d. So, when a is equal to root 2 times d, then what you have here cos of alpha is 1 by root 2. So, this whole thing phi of a can be calculated to be 4 m 1 by root 2 upon pi and that is again root 2 d. So, root 2 root 2. So, you get 2 m by pi d. Observe that this quantity here only depends on values that come from the nonlinearity the m and the d. So, this is the case where a is equal to root 2 d. Of course, uh, one should actually do the calculus and find out that uh, this is the value for which phi of a gets uh, minimized. But trust me on that, uh, that is the value for which it gets minimized and so therefore, you have this situation. Now, as a result now in this particular in this particular case where you have this uh, g of s uh, the linear plant which is given by this transfer function with this particular nonlinearity in the feedback loop. When you plot the Nyquist plot of the linear part and when you plot the describing function of the nonlinear part, this is what you get. And now, now something interesting happens. You see, if you have this situation, if there is to be a limit cycle, then this Nyquist plot should intersect this thing. But that is only possible if you see out here we had already calculated that uh, uh, the the gain uh, margin, if you uh, not gain margin, but you know the the crossover frequency omega is one, and g of j omega we know is a half, which is what we calculated some time back. The g of j j one is half magnitude is half. Okay. So, um, if minus 1 by phi a which is this quantity, if this quantity here for a equal to root 2 d phi of a turns out to be this which means minus 1 by phi a minus 1 by phi a the minimum value for minus 1 by phi a or rather the yeah, the modulus, the minimum modulus value for minus 1 by phi a or the maximum value for minus 1 by phi a, this is going to be minus pi d by 2 m. And if this minus pi d by 2 m turns out to be, so it depends on d m, correct. And if this turns out to be less than minus half, then it is exactly the situation that I have drawn. And if it is this situation, then the closed loop system is such that for all values of a, the system is stable. So, uh, what, what you are going to get is the any signal gets attenuated and so therefore, there is no limit cycle. The only hope of a limit cycle is if this is not less than minus half, but is greater than minus half. Now, if it is greater than minus half, then this is the kind of thing you can expect, which means there are two values of a. Okay. So, let me call this a 1 and let me call this a 2. There are two values of a for which the describing function and the and the Nyquist plot intersect. Of course, where the Nyquist plot intersects that point is already decided because there is only one point that uh, 
cuts the negative uh, real axis as far as the Nyquist plot is concerned. So, for A, there will be two plots, uh, two points, one would be A1, one would be A2, both of which go through this point minus half. Okay? And now, if you analyze these two points, if you take this point, uh, if you take the first point A1, uh, what is going to happen? Corresponding to this point A1, okay, so A is D here, as A is increasing, so you first hit A1. Then, uh, then you hit A2 and then A increases off to infinity. Yeah? So, we can say D is less than A1 is less than A2 less than infinity. That is the relation between A1 and A2, the two magnitudes that you have for which the evaluation of this function minus 1 upon 5 A turns out to be exactly minus half. Okay. Now, for this point A1, let us see what happens. If you have a signal in here with A1 and it gets perturbed so that, um, so that the signal magnitude becomes smaller, that is equivalent to being out here. But being out here essentially means that the system, the system will attenuate the signal, but if the system attenuates the signal, what it means is A becomes even smaller, so it goes further out. So, you move off that way. On the other hand, from A1, if uh, there is a perturbation which increases the magnitude, then you come inside. And when you come inside, then you know that the resulting closed loop thing is uh, unstable. That means, the, the, the magnitude grows. So, magnitude grows means you go from here and you go right round to A2. So, this A1 corresponding to A1, you get a limit cycle, but that limit cycle is an unstable limit cycle. So, A1 corresponds to an unstable limit cycle. On the other hand, A2 corresponds to a stable limit cycle and uh, one can argue in the same way because if A2 suddenly the, uh, the magnitude decreases, so you are inside, but once you are inside, then the resulting closed loop system is stable, um, is unstable, which means the, the signals uh, get magnified and so it gets back to A2. On the other hand, if it increases more than A2, so you come out here, but then uh, the system is stable, so it attenuates, so you go back. Yeah. So, there will be two limit cycles when you use a relay with dead time and this plant. Uh, and this uh, linear plant, then provided this, uh, I mean, uh, the condition that minus 1 by phi a, uh, the minus pi by d, uh, okay, minus pi by d by 2 m less than minus half, if this condition is true, then there are no limit cycles. Okay. On the other hand, if uh, minus pi by d by 2 m is greater than minus half, then there are two limit cycles and one of the limit cycles corresponding to the smaller magnitude is an unstable limit cycle and the one corresponding to a larger magnitude is a stable limit cycle. And therefore, now using describing function and the Nyquist plot, one can um, say a lot of things about the closed loop system with the nonlinearity and the linear part by looking at the describing function of the nonlinearity and the uh, Nyquist plot of the linear function and doing an analysis similar to this. Okay. So, uh, I guess I am out of time for this, uh, this particular lecture. So, uh, so let, me, let me stop here now.